Hello everyone. Um, in this video, I, I have, I'm here to discuss the the you know, theory background of your project type. So we're just gonna summarize basic equation that you use on your project type, and then on my next video, uh, I will do two or three examples. Then we'll dive with kinematics. Remember kinematics is that tend relative velocity then a projectile. I wish you had watched my previous video where I explained the result and then the other one relative velocity. And then this is a section which gives you 15% of your N4 science. Alright. Uh, in your projectiles, you're only gonna use three equations which you've been using previously uh, from grade 12 up to N1, N2, N3. And those equations are your linear equations. So when you solve the problem in the, the projectiles, you use three linear equations, which are the only form that sheet as well. Your equations are uh, your first equation will be V U plus A T. Second equation will be S is equal to U T plus half a t squared and then third equation may be v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 a s so you have these three linear equations which you use equation one two and three the other equation that you use when you uh, calculating your projectiles meaning on your projectiles you, you will be calculating in velocities and the distance or time just this, the only difference now is that uh, this was used in your linear equations where your object was straight or when you throw the object straight apart it was a projector which is perpendicular to the surface on this one uh, you have this type of a projectile this is my x and this is my y so you draw an object from this position it moves past to a turning point and then it falls to the surface this was my initial visit of my of my object it is at this certain angle now with the set initial uh, velocity now on a projectile it means that when an object moves from this point with this initial velocity, it moves to an angle. So you're projecting your, pro your object to an angle. That is uh, what you become in your projectile. Previously, you, you, you just, uh, your object on the projectile, it was just going straight, meaning it just with the nuclear the surface. But this object is uh, now at a certain angle to the surface. That is your projectile. Now with this object, it moves pass through this turning point and then fall to the surface again. It might be possible that your object is blocked before even reach this uh, turning point. But this is just a structure of your projectiles. And now, with your calculations on projectiles, you will either this distance, horizontal distance, or use the symbol SX, uh, meaning the distance that travel it, it's also called a range. So your range is a maximum horizontal distance it traveled. It cannot always reach a range, it cannot always reach a maximum. It might be possible that you need to calculate a distance it travel after it has moved maybe a certain distance, not a maximum distance. The maximum distance is only move from the surface and then back to the surface. This is the maximum distance. So you make you will, be, you will be required to calculate the time and the distance it travel horizontally. Or you might deal with vertical, your vertical movement is this one. HY. HY is the maximum vertical distance. So your calculations, when you take your three equations, it's either you'll be calculating a horizontal movement or a vertical movement. And so they might require time while it moves horizontally or a distance travel while it moves horizontally or they require time a during the vertical movement or a distance of a vertical movement this is a symbol for my vertical movement this is a symbol sx for my horizontal movement using these three equations 
what should happen now? We're gonna I will explain how you approach for a vertical movement and how you approach it for a horizontal movement. Before that, you can see that my initial velocity, certain angle, all the time when you calculate uh, your your you projectile at an angle. You need to resolve this. You need to resolve this initial velocity to a horizontal and vertical component. Your vertical component will always be your initial uh, velocity during a vertical movement. Horizontal component will always be uh, initial velocity that we use when your initial velocity for a horizontal movement. So we, before you calculate, you should never use this initial velocity as a case it is. You should resolve it to a vertical component where you where you will have a u sine theta and then your this is for your vertical movement your horizontal movement will always use it as u cos theta now <clears throat> let's have a look at how you approach it when you're dealing with the vertical movement Point to remember in your know, vertical movement, uh, your initial velocity under vertical movement all the time So every time when you apply your linear equations, your initial velocity can never be just u, but it will always be u sine theta because you resolve it to vertical. So if you incorporate it into an equation, we don't use it as u, but we use it as u sine theta all the time when you deal with the vertical movement. What you know also with the vertical movement is your acceleration. Your acceleration is negative g. So where g is 9.8. So you put your negative 9.8 at your acceleration. So with a vertical movement, you always have acceleration as 9.8 meters per second squared. Lastly, on the Only for a maximum, meaning it has reached this turning point. At a turning point, your velocity is zero when you do the vertical movement. So at V will be equal to zero. So if they say uh, calculate your maximum distance travel, then you already have a final velocity as zero. Your initial velocity is u sine theta. You already have your acceleration as negative g. That is only for uh, your vertical movement. You can create an equation uh, for a maximum, put zero here, put initial velocity as u sine theta, acceleration is 9.8, you can get your vertical distance. You can also get your time. But because you don't have those equations or formula sheets, I don't see it wise to give it to you. The only thing that you need is to know your principles. Know what is u, u is u sine theta. What is acceleration is negative g. If it's a maximum, if it's not a maximum, maybe your object stop before it reaches your turning point. Your maximum is 20 says reach your turning point, then your final velocity is zero. If there's nothing that specify your maximum, then you won't use V as zero. Unless they stated that your object falls back to the surface, that means it has passed through a maximum. And then from that point, you can be able to calculate your, uh, you, to use your final velocity as zero at your vertical movement. Now, let us look at the equation if it's going a uh, horizontal for your range, horizontal movement. So these are three important points for your vertical movement, one, two, and three, if it's a maximum. 
In these cases, uh, you deem it horizontal movement. Remember, you have now resolved your component into horizontal and vertical. Uh, your first point, your initial velocity again, it always you cos theta. All the time, when you use your initial velocity, when you do your horizontal movement, you have to put u cos theta, you have to use it as u cos theta. Also, acceleration, assume your acceleration is zero. So you don't have acceleration uh, at your horizontal movement. You don't have this acceleration. You won't be, you won't be, you won't use negative g because you assume it constant. It constant is straight when you resolve into a total component. So your acceleration all the time is zero. These are your two main, your, your two important points. And then the last point, only if it's a maximum. If it's a maximum, then it means a uh, time taken for a range is equal to two times time for your vertical maximum vertical distance. So if it's a maximum, uh, you assume that the time it took to reach a turning point is equal to the time it took from a turning point to your final point. So your time for a, a range is twice the time for your vertical movement. That means if you, you require time for your range, you need to go back and calculate the time using uh, your vertical movement and then you multiply the time by two. Only if it is a, a maximum, only if it is a range. But if they don't tell you that it's a maximum or it's a range or it falls back to the surface, the last uh, principles on both of your vertical and horizontal movement are not applicable. They are only applicable if your object has reached the surface, has passed to a certain point and then reached the surface. If by any means your object was blocked before it reached the surface again, the last point, your final velocity is not zero on your vertical movement. And then also your time for your range is not twice the time for a vertical movement because it didn't reach the point. It was blocked before it reached a turning point and then it didn't reach the surface. So this last is not applicable. And then this final velocity zero is not applicable. But most of the time you use your maximum, it means you use your final velocity zero and your time is twice the time for your uh, the time for your vertical movement. So these are just small the equation. Uh, to make this uh, <coughs> Section easier for you. Always remember these three principles. Three principles for vertical movement, apply your basic principle. Three principles for horizontal, and then you apply it. Always use your initial velocity as you sign theta for your vertical. Initial velocity as you cos theta for your horizontal. Then your problem will be easier for you. In the next video, I will do the examples based on your project types. Uh, I think two or three examples because I know this is a challenging section. And then we can both and then we can move on to the next chapter. Thank you for watching. I hope I wish this was helpful and uh, also please do subscribe to this channel.